through our binding, our hand binding. So we have used our scant trimmer to trim our quilt after we did the long arm quilting. Then we used our binding boss for our 2.5 inch binding strips. We added those to the quilt front and then we're gonna fold it over to the quilt back. And I don't know if you can see, but my little helper, <laughs> I don't ever let my dogs into the quilt studio. I um, I have two bulldogs and I never let them into the, the quilt studio, but Vinny is old and he gets anxious sometimes. And so since I don't have any quilt, any client quilts out, I went ahead and let him come in. So he wants to say hi. This is old man Vinny. His birthday's on 4th of July and he turned 13 this year. <laughs> And the other fat man is coming in here too. He wants to say, Oliver, do you want to say hi too? <laughs> oh, I can't pick Oliver up because he's fat. But um, anyway, I thought I would let you check them out and see them. Come here, Ollie. Come here. Sit down and say hi to all the clothing friends. Turn around. Sit down. <laughs> Anyway, these are my two fat men. Come on, let's go. This floor <laughs> makes them sound like they're tap dancing. All right, go. Go back in the house. <laughs> so, anyway, I just thought I would share a little bit of my uh, inside my house. Just my, my two men. Um, so, anyway, they got me distracted. So, we are going to go back inside. Go back inside. <laughs> All right, so... When, if you haven't checked out the first two videos on the um, trimming and the bind and adding the strips, you need to check those out. Um, this is how the binding boss and the scant trimmer come in the mail. So I have them back in stock, and so you can go order yours. They're kind of going to come packed like this with thank you notes from me, and then um, in cardboard. And um, so. That's what we're gonna do now. So let's go check it out. Let's go do some hand binding. I'm in such a good mood today, it's gonna be fun. So let's go check out the sofa and we'll go do some hand binding. Okay, so we're sitting and we're relaxing. So this is what I do when I do my binding is I usually sit on the sofa in the evenings in front of the TV and my hubby hangs out in here my kid comes in and the dogs are here and um, so it's just kind of my family time and relaxed time and I actually really enjoy it so I think that a lot of people just really dread hand binding and I think that you need to just sort of train your brain to think that it's your time it's your relaxed time and so that's what I do so I'm sitting here and um, I have my sew together bag that my friend Tammy made me and so I'm going to show you all the goodies that I use when I do my hand binding but just try to remember that it's just uh, it's just fun time it's just relaxed time get a glass of wine and if you're not into that then get some tea whatever but just relax okay so now that we are all relaxed and we're sitting on the sofa we're ready to do our hand binding so the first thing that i use is a small clover thimble i keep it on my right my middle finger on my right hand because i'm right-handed that's just how i do it then you're going to need some thread i use orafil 50 weight thread and i'm using white i think it'll be easier for you to see in the video today and then some wonder clips a pair of scissors i use my ginger scissors and um some needles and I use the Lori Holt binding needles. They come in these little tubes. And inside the tube, when you buy them, there's small, medium, and large needles inside there. And I separated them, so I have mediums in one and smalls in another, and then I just label them with some little washi tape. So I use the smalls and the mediums primarily. Today, I'm gonna use the small one. All right, and so when I thread my needle, I need leave my thread on my spool and I take the very end of the thread and I pull it really, really, really close so that there's not hardly any showing in between my two fingers right there. And then I'm going to take my thread and kind of push it down onto the, oh, I don't know if I got out of camera, out of the camera sight there. Let's do it again. So we are going to, there's your needle or there's your thread rather. You pull it down so that there's not hardly any showing. 
and then I just point my needle right on top of the thread and I just grab it with the other end and pull it. So this is my tail. Right now it's only a couple of inches. And what I do is I pull that tail. And so there's my needle. And so I'm not gonna put a, there's my needle, there's the end. I'm not gonna put a, a knot at the end of it. Um, you're supposed to cut it about from your elbow to your hand. I usually go way longer. Um, you really shouldn't, but that's just what I do. Um, when you're a beginner, you probably should. It will be easier to maneuver. When it's real long, it can get knotted up and tangled. And um, so I'll show you that. I probably will get a tangle, but it's good for you to see it. So I take my needle and my thread and put it aside. And so I've already stitched out a small section here. So you can see this is the front and there's our perfect miter. And this is the back and that's where you can there's where the hand stitching is and so I am going to push this aside so I can show you um, and get you get you going so I'm going to push this aside over here and then flip this part back so this is the back of the quilt and that's how I like to do my binding I start with the back facing up and when I start it I push the needle through and and so remember there's not a there's not a knot at the end so I pull it pull it pull it remember I said this is way longer than you should use <laughs> use about half this but but this is just what I like to do um, so pull it about just about through so you have this little tiny tail left over I put my thumb over it and then I put my needle through it again and just make a loop so you're just doing a couple of stitches and then it doesn't really matter. I usually do a couple of stitches and then a couple of knots. So when you do the knot, I just take it and then um, you can see that there's a there's an opening and there's like a loop right there. And then you can just pull your pull your needle through that little hole and then it'll make a knot. And then I usually do that same thing again. So like I said, it doesn't really matter the amount. I usually do a couple of loops and a couple of knots just as long as it's looped on there and then take my binding and I fold it over and so since we use the scant trimmer there's just a scant of an edge left right here and then when we fold it and we're going to meet it up when we sewed that on with this scant, we created this line and that's the line that we're going to follow so we're going to wonder clip our quilt. I used to like to list, use the flat side on the front. That may just be me. I don't know. I'm probably just a weirdo. But um, and so I usually only use about five or eight pin or clips all at one time. So I don't clip the whole thing. I just clip the section that I'm working on. All right. So now we have our little knot in there, and we're gonna fold our binding over and line it up with our line. And it does not matter where you start. Anywhere is fine. And then. We're gonna take our needle and we're gonna put it through the backing and the batting, but not the front. So this needle is gonna make a little chomp, a little stitch. It's gonna grab a little piece. And then once this has been, then once you grab that little piece, then it's just gonna, then you're gonna grab a little piece of your binding that's folded over to that point also. So that's just the first step. So now that you have a piece that's in there, so now you have your, your thread is coming out right there. And so now you're gonna put your needle in right where the thread is coming out. And then you're gonna come right back out, right even with that line. And then as you're even with the line, grab the very edge of the binding. And then we're gonna, that's what you're gonna do over and over and over again and so periodically look and make sure when you do your little when you grab your little piece that you don't grab the front because if you stick it all the way through you're going to grab the front and then you're going to see a stitch like that so you don't want that you just want to grab the backing and the batting and then pull it through and i have seen people do Okay, that's a good example. So see, since the end of the thread doesn't have a knot, 
it can come off. It's not that big of a deal if it happens. Just stick it back on there. Sometimes you might have to trim the edge to get it on there good enough, but okay. So sometimes I like to do things on purpose so that I can show you how to overcome the challenge. So, so what I mean by making, so your tail, that's right there. So just make sure when you're starting out that your tail is really long and then you won't lose that needle off the end. All right, so now we're gonna go in right underneath where it came out and then catch the binding. And so we are human, so it's nearly impossible to make them perfect or exactly the same every time. So I just try to keep mine and my stitches about, a, about the same scant of a quarter inch. So it's not quite a quarter inch. Um, it's usually, so there's where it's going in. And so if you do too much less than that, you're gonna hate it. And in all the times that I've done hand binding, and I've done it for a lot of quilts, I've never had any of them pull off. Um, so I think that this amount is just fine. And so I also think that it's, it's a good amount to keep some good rhythm. And so that's what you're gonna do over and over again. And so I'm gonna show you another thing that could happen. Let's say you're going along and you get it in there and you go and then you go to and do another one and you've realized that you missed it. You didn't get that last couple of pieces. So all you really need to do is so you're way over here. You don't want to put your needle in and then leave that big space right there. So all you really need to do is just get it in line. And then I usually just sort of turn it so that it's easier to maneuver and then put your needle back through and then have it come out right where, have it come out where the, where your last good part was. And so now you can fix that little spot that you missed. You just go back through and grab it, <coughs> grab it. I live near a school and the school is just getting out and Oliver is yelling because he hears those kids. <laughs> if you ever had a bulldog, they do a lot of weird things. They make all kinds of weird noises. They sound like, <laughs> they sound crazy. They do a lot of gurgling. That's what I call it. It sounds like growling, but it's like gurgling. So. Anyway, that's what we're doing. And so we're just going through the backing and the batting and coming out on the binding. There's a lot of B words, so if I say the wrong one, try to work with me. Because <laughs> I often have a lot of nonsense that comes out of my mouth. Um, okay. So we're gonna just keep going and remember, try not to get your binding pushed over too far so that it's way past your line because then from the front, it'll look a little bit wonky and curvy. So try to just stay, put your needle in kind of up underneath where the binding is and then come out right at the edge. So when I'm not doing a video, I try really hard to go right underneath. Here, I'll come over here. Go right underneath where the thread came out just get your binding and your batting and then come back out at the at the very edge like that. Okay. So we're almost to the edge. And so as I near the edge, I try to get once I get to the edge, I make my stitches pretty close together just because I don't want them to, to pull apart at the corner. Okay, so now we're to the corner and when we pressed it, we pressed it down. And this is, so when we sewed it and we attached our binding, this is the stitch that we used right here. And that's the stitch that we made that went off to the corner 
of the of the quilt when we stitched it on there and so that's the line that we want to use so we want to use our fingernail and kind of poke it in and so that's the intersection that we're going to stop so i'm going to stitch a couple more stitches until i get to that intersection right there and then i'm going to do the same same little uh, knot i'm going to go in and then I'm going to stick my needle through that little loop. And then that's going to make a little knot. And I usually do that a couple of times. So there's, there it is. And then once I've done that a couple of times, then I push it up through so that it comes out at the point. So now I have my thread coming out the point. And then when we miter it, I'm gonna move the clip so I can show you. So then when we miter it, we're gonna put the needle, make sure you've your tail is not too close to your needle. So then we're gonna push the needle back through. And when I do this, I try to catch the binding and the backing and the batting so that it comes out right on the edge. And it's okay if it's not exactly right on the edge Sometimes I'll even have it stitch through a stitch. Sometimes I'll even have it come out right there and then go back in. Um, but we're gonna put it through. I need to start over because I've moved it too many times. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and we're gonna come out right at the edge, right down there. Oops, and pull it out. And now I'm gonna put it right back through and then make a teeny tiny little stitch. And then I'm gonna do another little teeny tiny stitch. So that, so now when I go around the corner right here, I do several little tiny stitches, usually probably around five or six. And I try to do them really small. And then after I do those five or six small ones, then I can kind of space them out a little bit more. But I don't want there to be a bunch of gaps at the corners that they get caught on anything. Okay, so that's our backing. And there's our front. And then we just keep going and going. So now you know how to do a corner. Um, and you know how to go backwards if you mess anything, if you, if you skip a couple stitches by accident. And if you happen to break your thread, that's basically the same thing. You do the same thing as when you skip a couple of stitches. So with the Orifil cotton thread, it's kind of easy to pull it and, and break it if, you're, if you get a little carried away. So, oops. <laughs> so if you see, now that's popped open. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to put this, put the clip where we broke it. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did before when we started it. We're going to go a loop, another loop. Oops, I missed it. So we're going to do a couple of loops. And then we're going to put our needle back through and make a little knot. And you can do it like I said you there's no magic number you can do it I usually do it a couple of times of loop and then a couple of knots and so right there is where we broke our thread and so we don't want it to come back and pull out so what I do is I take my needle and I kind of turn it again and then I take it and I push it through and I have it come out over here 
and you can go a little ways farther if you want to, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I pull it out until I feel like I'm way past where that break is. And then I take and I do a couple of knots. So I do a teeny weeny weeny, oh, I'm out of the camera view. So I do a teeny weeny little, little jump, a little stitch there. And then I go back through. So there's your, go back through and then make a little knot. <laughs> And then I broke it again. Well, so that wasn't exactly the plan, but that's okay. So we're gonna we're gonna just trim this guy off because he we didn't really use him. And we're gonna start over and I'll show you. Okay, so now we're gonna thread our needle. We're gonna pull it way, way back, push the whole Oh, I'm starting to not be able to see very well. I need glasses, like better ones. I went into the eye doctor and I need better, better ones. Okay, so now we have the tail. Now we have the tail. Um, okay, and so we cut it off the spool. And so now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back do a couple of stitches and then we're gonna do a couple of little knots and then go back through so now we've made a couple of knots and now we can fold that over and just because it's better for my my own angle then I'm, I'm going through the backing and the and the batting And then, can you hear the dog? <laughs> he sounds like an old man. Oliver is kind of old, also he's eight. They're both pretty old, but all bulldogs fart and snore and they're pretty comical. Okay, so now we've gone back a little ways. And now we can recover from our broken thread. And so now when we go back through, we're just gonna do a little tiny stitch and then Put our needle back through the loop to make a little knot and then i usually do that a couple of times in that in this in this fragile area so right there we're going to do it again we'll go back through oops and then grab our needle in through the loop and so now we've knotted it a couple of times and then you also could do some smaller stitches just to try to be sure. Okay, so you know how to do the corners. You know how what to do if you break a thread. You know how to start and stop. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, so you keep relaxing and enjoying your binding time. Make sure you comment below and let me know if you have any questions or let me know what you think about the video. And um, I'm going to link all the, uh, the new rulers and all the things that I used in the video down below so you can check that out. And I would love for you to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can check out my next video. And I hope you have a super great day. Thanks a bunch for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.